Have you ever wondered what us sprinkler people do all day? Well, come along, let me show you. Our first appointment is in Pembroke Pines, Florida. The customer states that the pump is not working. So let's go knock on the door, have a conversation with the customer, and then go look for his pump. Should have double checked the notes, says the customer won't be home. Stood at the door for a few extra minutes than I needed to. Now I can go look for the irrigation pump. Is it just me or is that a really tiny pump? Now, all jokes aside, this is actually a city water system and calls like this come in all the time where the customer thinks they have a pump, but it's actually a valve that is opening and closing the water connection to the irrigation system. I don't see a backflow in this situation because the water meter's right there and there isn't one in between here, not even in the bushes. I just wanted to double check. So we will be proposing to install a backflow here. It turns out that's a community fed system, so a backflow won't be needed. What do I mean by that? There is a large pump station pumping water to every single one of the houses in that HOA. Each house has an inch and a quarter pipe going to it that can be connected to the eventual irrigation system. So that system doesn't need a backflow. On with the video. And if the customer is interested, a smart irrigation controller and control valves instead of that indexing valve. So let's go ahead and see how this system works or even if it works and then give the customer a proposal based on what we've seen as well as the upgrades that I just told you about. On the side of the house here, you've got two sprinkler heads that don't pop up when they get turned on. So they're not gonna water the areas they're supposed to. So we need to replace those. In the backyard, you've got a sprinkler head right back there. I wanna move it out to the front so that it can water in towards the bushes and also cover all of this turf right here. I wanna do the same thing with the sprinkler head back there. I wanna move it out to where you see this white flag. Over here, there's a sprinkler in the back. And all I wanna do with this one is move it closer to the front here, put it on a riser so that it waters the front of these. And then these should fill in a little bit better. Over here, we've got, these heads do not pop up. That one is broken. So all three of these need to be redone. And then out front was the fourth head that needed to be moved. It's in the ferns right here around the corner. There's a head right back in the corner here. I wanna move it out to where you see the white flag here. And then out front, we've got a broken head there, broken head there. All the yellow flags are broken heads. And then that pink flag is the special broken head that's gonna be in tree roots. That's gonna take a little bit more time to fix than all of the other ones. That's actually the video I sent the customer so that when he's reviewing the proposal, he can see what I'm talking about. You see, he wasn't here on site. So it's kind of hard to walk the customer through what I found in any other way. So I send the customer a video like that. The customer is interested in upgrading that old timer to at least a digital controller, not a smart controller. It turns out this is a community fed system. So they're pumping the water out of a lake and feeding it to all the houses in this community. So he doesn't need a backflow for that. All right, so for this one, the customer has a valve leaking when the pump comes on and they wanna make sure the water doesn't spray the house. Pretty much everybody wants to make sure the water doesn't spray the house. The water's not gonna grow the house. So let's see what's going on with this system. You see, I knew to record that little bit before I got here because the customer was waiting in his driveway as they usually are. Let me show you why this customer wants to keep the water off his house. Well, I don't have to show you that. The house is getting painted. But let me show you why he's complaining about the water getting on the house in the first place. Wait till you see what I have to show you. So hang on before I show you. How much room do you think is from this point to this point? I'm willing to bet you don't think it's 30 feet and you'd be right. And that's a rotor. And that's a rotor. And that's a rotor. You get a rotor. You get a rotor. You get a rotor. You get a rotor. Everybody gets a rotor. And even that is a rotor. That's probably why the whole front of his house keeps getting covered in rust stains. That and because he has a well system. He'd also like to keep the rust stains off this beautiful white PVC fence. And how much you want to bet? Oh, yep, that's right. There's a rotor in there. There's a rotor over there. And there's one where that pink flag is down there. That's how this is happening. The customer also wants to have this indexing valve either changed or upgraded because of the leak you see there. He says he used to live in Bradenton, Florida. And when he turned on zone number one, it said number one on the controller and that zone came on. Well, that's because he used to have a digital system before he moved to beautiful South Florida, where all of these analog mechanical systems exist. So... I'm willing to bet he'd be more interested in those valves than to up or to replace that indexing valve. So let's see what he says. We're going to go talk to him now. The conversation went well. The customer is going to upgrade the indexing valve to individual control valves, four of them, in fact, along with a digital controller. We did have a conversation about a smart controller. 
this customer happens to like the idea of going outside and adjusting his times from the controller, so that's what he's going to get. In addition to that, he'll also get a rain sensor so that he doesn't have to remember to turn the sprinklers back on after he's turned them off because of rain. And we're going to move some of the sprinkler heads out of the areas that they're at into the turf so that they don't water the guy's house. In addition to all of that, we're also going to take out those rotors in the front yard to install MP rotator nozzles so that it doesn't blast his house. All right, now let me get back to my lunch. If you're ever in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, stop by La Spada's. This place is amazing. The next customer is interested in upgrading their irrigation system to something else. I don't know what they currently have. It's likely going to be indexing valve and a mechanical timer. And at the very least, we can upgrade that to a digital timer with individual valves. And if you want to go a step further, we can do a smart controller. No matter what controller we're going with, we're going with the Hunter controller. And I was about to put on this hat, right? But since I'm going to this appointment, it makes more sense to wear the expert hat because I'm going to be talking about a Hunter controller. So let's get on to that appointment now. All right, so we've made it to the house and I'm looking at the irrigation system and it is exactly what I thought it was going to be. An Intermatic timer with a mechanical valve. So we're going to go ahead and upgrade this or give them a proposal to upgrade it to either a digital or a smart controller with individual valves. This is a, judging by that, four zone system and also judging by the cam here, that's the number four by my thumb right there. That tells me that this is a four zone cam, so I'm sure that this is a four zone system. So when I go to quote this, there'll be four valves that go in here. All right, I haven't turned the system on yet, but I imagine there's going to be some issues considering that that's what the lawn looks like. All right, let's go ahead and turn on the system. At least that worked. Doesn't sound like the water's moving through that combo valve and it's leaking out of the anti-siphon half of it, so that's a problem. And it just sounded like, nope. Let me adjust the flow control a little bit and see if we can get this to, it's like whistling water through. Oh, there we go. A lot more water's going through there now. Now it's not whistling anymore. Now we've probably got some pretty good pressure going out somewhere. Let's go see where this water's coming out. Probably the other side of the house. Maybe not, maybe, I don't know. Let's go to the backyard. I didn't see anything out front. Well, we at least have one break. Maybe this is the beginning of the zone. Let's see what we got in here. Yep, that's just a head. Oh, there we go. We blew out another head over there. You can see the stand on the wall. So that's one, two. This is gonna be a phased proposal. I'm gonna to have to make some repairs on this system before I'm gonna be able to see everything. You can see the dog's been digging up the lateral line there. It does look like that might be, well, it'd have to be the beginning of the zone and that's a three quarter inch pipe. So that means this zone's probably gonna have about six to eight heads on it. And those are the only two that I could see and I'm not seeing any water back here. So that tells me that I'm gonna to have to fix those two sprinkler heads before I will see anything else on this particular zone. And that's if the indexing valve isn't acting up and sending water to all four zones. Although I think if that were happening, we wouldn't have had enough pressure here to see what we see. So that might not be the case. So far, we've got two sprinkler heads. We've got to start somewhere. We've got to start fixing heads to start seeing more, uh, more of the heads pop up. If it gets to a point where there's not a lot going on, then we may revert to installing a new system. Sometimes troubleshooting the existing system will end up costing just as much as a new system. So let's see where we go from here. That's only zone one out of four. Well then, I found about nine spots where water was leaking out where sprinkler heads used to be. So this is going to be a phased approach where on phase one, I'm going to replace those nine sprinkler heads. In fact, I'm probably just gonna cap all nine of those, then go through their respective zones to reveal whatever else is probably broken on those zones. At the end of the day, it would be cheaper to fix what he has here than it would be to install an entirely brand new irrigation system. A new irrigation system, by the way, for a four zone house on a half acre lot is right around $10,000. Repairs on this system won't be anywhere near that. We're gonna start by upgrading the controller and the valves. Then we'll go around and cap all nine of those heads we found to reveal the rest of them and then give the customer a phase two proposal. Three down, one to go. This last appointment, when the customer turns on their pump, no water comes out of the hose bib. That means their pump has lost prime. We're gonna start by closing this ball valve and hooking up our guzzler to start suctioning the water, vacuuming the water 
up from the lake over there manually using this tool. Well, I attempted to prime the pump with my guzzler and that didn't work. And it makes sense because when I went to pressure test the pump, water came out of here. And this did have some of this artificial turf in here. And the homeowner did tell me that there were nails in here. I'm willing to bet when I dig that pipe up, we're gonna find a little tiny hole in the pipe where the nail used to be. And I'm also willing to bet that that's thin wall pipe. We're not gonna be using that. We're gonna be using schedule 40, which would have taken a lot more effort to drill a nail through. All right, so I think we've uncovered the problem here. It looks like the landscaper who was doing the artificial turf definitely hit the line and they know they hit the line because they did a saddle here. Watch what happens when I open up the water. You see that leaking out? When I cut this pipe out, you'll see what I mean by a saddle. So this is the pipe we pulled out of the hole and we'll get to that in a second. And there's the new pipe. We ended up installing a single coupling and two elbows to rebuild this section of the line. Something that the homeowner doesn't know and he'll find out by watching this video is that this line was actually hit more than once. There's another hole right here. And that's where the hole that the landscaper tried to fix ended up. And yeah, he tried to put a saddle on it and you can see from the inside of the pipe right there, that's where he hit it. I don't know if the other one went all the way through, but he definitely dinked the pipe right there. Anyways, we're gonna go ahead and pressure test this one more time, make sure that there aren't any more problems because that's entirely possible and get the system primed up. Hopefully that this was the only hole. I think it was, we might've seen another hole pop up somewhere else if there was another one. Although if it was small enough, maybe it wouldn't. So let's go ahead and get this pressure tested and find out quick. Oh yeah, customer wants me to leave the pipe for his contractor to see the mistake he made. Something tells me the contractor is going to see this video because the customer will probably send it to him. The pump is over there and the lake is right here, which means that this suction line has to travel through this green space. And well, you, oh man, they did it again. I'm pretty sure the customer is not going to be thrilled about this. To be perfectly clear, I warned the customer before I started doing the job that it was entirely possible that the nine inch nails that were used, not the band, but the actual part that was used to put this turf down, probably made its way into the intake line in a few spots. We were hoping that it was just that one spot over there, but as you saw behind me where that gate entry is somewhere over there, there it is right behind me, there's a leak. So I'm gonna have to fix the leak there too. And if they put a pinhole in it somewhere else after we fix that leak, we will discover that one as well. That'll depend on if the customer wants to agree to having this fixed as well after paying for that one to get fixed. To be perfectly clear, I warned the customer before I started doing the job that it was entirely possible that the nine inch nails that were used, not the band, but the actual part that was used to put this turf down, probably made its way into the intake line in a few spots. We were hoping that it was just that one spot over there but as you saw behind me where that gate entry is somewhere over there, there it is right behind me, there's a leak. So I'm gonna have to fix the leak there too. And if they put a pinhole in it somewhere else after we fix that leak, we will discover that one as well. That'll depend on if the customer wants to agree to having this fixed. And that's a wrap. We won't be fixing the second line. The customer is actually gonna reach out to the landscaper and have a conversation with them before he decides to go ahead and have that second line fixed. Sorry, Mr. Landscaper, you should check your work after you've done it. Turn on the sprinkler system, make sure you didn't break anything before you disappear. Because then people like me show up and prove to the customer what actually happened. So anyways, that was a day in the life of an irrigation technician. See you tomorrow.